Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface and we are back in MILF Manor, King of Cringe Baby. But that's not the only thing that's back. My OG Twitter is unbanned. Yes, the new Elon amnesty has struck my Twitter. I am now unbanned. At heel versus babyface link in the description box down below if you want to follow me on the twit twat machine. There's always something fun going on there. But do you know what's more fun? Watching <coughs> throw themselves at children. Uh, it's not remotely disturbing at all. Look, this episode, I even made notes. Legit. Uh, on the back uh, of an envelope. Seems legit to me. Let's get to it, folks. So, <laughs> who this? Who are these people? Yeah, I said these people. Who are these people? So this this April we saw in episode one, briefly as she was introducing herself, because all the women introduced themselves. This is Dylan, maybe her son, who we've only seen like little flashes of like very quickly in, in an episode no no conversation no nothing now the reason why they're showing them off is obviously i mean come on this ain't spoilers folks this is the couple which is going to get kicked out of the house it's blatantly obvious if you don't show them on the show then they're not going to be on it are they so they're showing them off a little bit in this episode <laughs> because they're going to kick them off and they, know, and they need people to go, oh, those people that were just seen for the very first time in this episode. Oh, okay. And boy, <laughs> let's just say what they do put on camera. I think they wish they would have gone ages ago. So yeah, we get a brief look. Uh, bye. Everyone else, by the way, is out partying. What they're trying to do is they're setting up the narrative that April version two and Dylan maybe maybe uh, are not social animals. Everyone else is is plastered, is absolutely hammered downstairs, fake dancing. Might not even actually be any music on because this is such a produced, scripted show, reality TV. Uh, and of course, these these lot, and I said these people again, can't do that twice. And these lot here, you know, th this is the donut factory. The women are lining up, you know, they're they're the they're the workers in the donut factory. Uh, and the and the lads, uh, well, they're the customers, and they're, they're the customers that come along and make a deposit into the donut factory to keep it going. To keep it going. So um, Ryan, I think this guy is, is turning every episode more and more into Patrick Bateman. He's getting more and more controlling, and he's getting more and more weird. Uh, he don't when he sets his sights on someone, he don't like nobody looking at them. You, don't you look at my girl? This is my girl. This is my property. Is it is it any wonder Steph? Steph starts doing what she's doing. But Steph, by the way, gets exposed in this episode as well as being, ooh, she's a little troublemaker. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. Little troublemaker. Wanna be a troublemaker. So Ryan's like, hey, uh, you know, he's like putting his hands around her, trying to like lock her in. This is my property, boys. Nobody takes my property away from me. She, the way that they've edited it, and because this is a reality show, we don't know the, the actual full context. The way that they've edited is to make Ryan look like a bit of a controlling creep, uh, which <laughs> this is a show where mid-40-year-old women want to uh, get a deposit in the rear O-ring in the rear donut shop from some 20-year-old 
while at the same time still trying to coddle their sons to, uh, and pretend that uh, they're still children. But when it comes to the, the deposit in the, in the rear entrance of the donut shop uh, before 1 p.m. by Amazon, if you order before 8 uh, p.m. the following night, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, do what I say, don't do what I do type of business. So anyway, uh, Gabriel, who's also a massive psycho, uh, he comes along and he grabs Steph and he's just like, right, we're going, we're going dancing. We're going dancing now, all right? That's what we're going to do. We're going to go dancing and uh, see you later. And uh, Ryan is not happy with that. He's not happy with that at all. Um, but Gabriel, after here, here we go. They're doing a little bit of dancing. Then Gabriel is like, Stephanie likes to play nice. That's what she's like. You don't know her. You, you don't know her. She's playing you and Ryan like a fiddle because she's got so much more life experience than these two numpties. These two numpties think that they're the boss when it comes to this woman. This woman's just like, no, I'm going to play Ryan off on, on uh, Gabriel and I'm going to get what I want out of it. I'm going to see what bits I like out of both and then I'm going to get rid of what I don't. But the ignorance of youth, the naivete. Uh, Ryan's not happy with that. Ryan's just like, shoot, my property. So, uh, Jose and Dylan have a conversation in the morning that absolutely isn't scripted by the production team. And uh, Dylan is having a cry. He's like, wah, wah. Why doesn't the woman that I've just met and I know nothing about saying one thing to me and then doing another thing? It's as if I don't actually know her, but I really know her and I know what she said and I know what she likes. But really, I, I don't know a thing about her. And then he's wondering, what, why? Why is she not doing everything that I want her to do? Ah! Stupid boys. Uh, so, yeah, that was a fun conversation. So everyone sat down and the production team send an email, message, whatever, onto their, onto their uh, you know, grinder phones, Tinder phones. And uh, they say, hey, look, we realize that some of you aren't getting to know others. And it's really important that in this dating game, where uh, we're trying to get boys to dump Tinder sauce into their mother's donut holes, uh, it's really important that you, you know somebody. You make a connection with somebody. Uh, so we're going to put you on a speed dating course where you meet everyone for five minutes. Because that's, that's all you need. That's all you need. Be like, oh, right, God, uh, Beth... Charlene, Charlene, oh yeah, this five minutes, this first five minutes I've ever got to spend with you is wonderful. I feel really confident now uh, to dump my Tinder sauce all over your face, your, your, your wrinkly prune neck, and your, and your saggy titty bags. Do you know something? I'm just going to go on a detour for a couple of minutes as I unscrew my water so I can lubricate my throat. Lubricate it less than one of the women, like Kelly, in this freaking episode. So it tells me she got it very lubricated. When I did the first three episodes of MILF Manor, I was in the trenches. I was in the quagmire, you know? I was there in the quicksand, just wading in one episode, boom, next day, episode two, boom, next day, episode three, bang. But I've had four days since. And in those four days, I've got out of the quagmire. I've got out of the quicksand. I've got out of the cesspit. And I've gone, I've had a shower, beautiful. Oh, yeah. 
rubbing that soap on. Ah, wonderful stuff, yeah? Nice and clean. I, I smell fresh. And then I go, I had to go back in, I had to go back into the shit tip again. And I'm there and I'm clean and I smell good. And I'm, you know, I'm like, oh, you know, isn't life fun? And then I'm like, uh, uh, I've got to get back in. It's such a different feeling. It's, oh, it's so different, man. So we go on a speed dating course. Charlene, I think I've been calling her Daphne. I mean, look, Charlene, by the way, who's here in honor of her dead daughter who died less than a year ago at the age of 27, uh, who's come here with her son, which was her dead daughter's brother, obviously, who's a male stripper, uh, less than a year, of course, that, that she's passed away. She's come here to, 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 to um, dumpster manor. To take the love mayonnaise of one of these young lads in honor of her dead daughter. Don't forget that. Never forget that. Never forget. Just like those, those soldiers that are lifting that flag, you've just got a bunch of these MILFs just like lifting up that, uh, you know, that condom wrapper. Never forget. Never forget. So she like lights up like, uh, you know, like a, 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 a lights on a Christmas tree. Holy, she's just like, all oh, right, this is my opportunity. It's my opportunity to get to know somebody. By the way, these people have a very interesting idea of get to know somebody. Because, you know, I'm not trying to be a prude. I'm not trying to be a prude. I'm not a prude. I've had, I've sown my wild oats, you know. But when I go on a date with somebody, I, I try and get some information out of them. You know, I'm trying to get something about their interests, what they like, what they do, something that I can I can connect with, something that I I can try and see if we've got something in common. You know, and if I see that thing that we've got in common, then I can go, oh yeah, yeah, we did it. So we can actually have a legitimate and and get a, a genuine conversation going in a subject matter that both of us have familiarity with, and that will give us the best opportunity to open up to one another. I mean, that's just me. Uh, she wants to know, uh, you know, uh, what they do in bed immediately. What, 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 what do you do in bed? So, sorry, 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 Charlene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sit down. Shut the fuck up, little boy. Because that's what you are, little boys. By the way, Gabriel, uh, the guy that kissed his best friend, really not sure. This guy is dressed more effeminately than any of the women tonight. This t-shirt thing, <laughs> this like see-through weird thing here, this doesn't go all the way down to the waist. And uh, No, no, it kind of cuts off on the midriff when he stood up. He's got his makeup on. He's got his, his, his uh, you know, nail varnish on. Crosses his legs like a good girl um, and starts going quite femmy. But maybe he's trying to do this as, a, as like a, an animal instinct protection type of device. Don't come, don't, don't be interested in me. I'm, I'm just a gay boy, you know? I'm just a gay boy playing straight, you know what I mean? Because this woman here, this isn't a cougar. This is the whole fucking zoo. She's just like, sit your fucking ass down, you little pretty boy. And tell me how you fuck. Huh? What? I said, tell me how you fuck. Because mama has got needs. She got needs. Needs that need tending to. Come again? So these guys can't get out of this fucking seat quick enough. They're like, I need to get out of here. I need to get out of here. This, this, this bitch crazy. This bitch absolutely crazy. Oh, so all the women, are, you know, all the dudes and all the women are, are, are laughing at her because she's like nuts. So young and so moist. That's how she introduced herself in episode one. She, uh, she goes on a date with Jose, a five-minute, you know, wonder date with Jose. And Jose does, does it. Jose's a one-trick pony. 28 years old, one-trick pony. He's, 
He's a handsome guy. Don't get me wrong. He's got the accent. Hello. My name, Jose. But that's it. That's his spiel. And he does it to every single solitary woman. And he's, got, he's going to get found out in this episode. Because all he does is he goes to him and he goes, Oh, yeah, I like a mature woman. You know? Like a woman like you with a nice smile. You know? I like a, a personality. You know? All he says. That's all he says. Just platitudes, nice... Nice, soft platitudes, does it to every single woman. So nobody thinks this guy's authentic. And he doesn't come across as authentic. Because he says the same shit to everybody. So... <laughs> so... This is... We... <laughs> Enter Dylan... First time that we've really seen Dylan or spoken to Dylan. Holy. And he is just a wet sponge. Absolute wet sponge. Um, you know, what do you like to talk about? I don't, I don't like to talk about it. You know, if people talk to me, I'll talk back. Otherwise, I don't talk. Sorry? You, you don't want to converse? You wanna, don't want to ask questions? No, not really. No. You want to ask me a question? Fine. You know what I'll do. Okay, uh, lie to the party. Kelly's just like, I don't think that I can fuck you in 10 minutes. So uh, you're off my, my easy to fuck list. <sighs> Charlene's still scaring off all the boys. Now then, Dylan, please take a seat. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Good. It's good to know. How do you fuck? Ah, oh, boy. Enter April version two. April version two is the mother of Dylan. Dylan's quiet born. <laughs> That's his Game of Thrones name. Because he doesn't say shit. So when April came on the camera for her date, I was thinking to myself, I wonder if she's going to be like Dylan. I wonder if she's going to also be quiet, reserved, kind of awkward around the contestants, not really know how to play the dating game. And, you know, this is, this is why this, far, uh, this son and mother get removed from the show because the producer's just like, we can't do anything with these people. We can't. They're too clumsy, they're too awkward. Um, April's kind of like the reverse of a son. Because when the guys are sat down, she just says to him, hey, remember Jimmy? And they're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that, that secrets game we played? Yeah, yeah. This is, by the way, this is one of the guy, guys who's run away. And she just says, uh, so, you like eating ass? Because I like having it done to me. Pardon? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you, do you like eating ass? On, this is a fight. We've got five minutes. I'm cutting to the fucking chase here. Do you like eating ass? Not your thing? Oh, that's a shame, because I like, I like having my ass eaten. Maybe start with what's your favorite fucking color? Just, I don't know. Holy, and I know this is edited, but she in hell. So uh, this, this poor, I mean, this guy's 20. He's naive as they come. Um, I mean, I'm sure he's, he's maybe had a, a little bit of fun with some, probably some girls his own age. But he admits he's never been with an older woman. He's, but he's like interested in older, no, no, you're not, mate. Your mum wanted to come here to get fucked on the left. And uh, you were dragged along, unfortunately, because of it. And this guy is, you can actually see 
the layers of his innocence being stripped away from him. These are the lips of a man that says, I don't want to, be boy, boy. I don't want to be a no more. I don't want to be a no more. Will you eat my fucking ass, boy? And Steph starts playing the game again. Paula scares the living shit out of the 20, 20 year old. He's just like, yeah, you got a tight body. Uh, well, how could I not want to get into bed with that tight body of yours? She's just like, how fucking old are you, sunshine? I'm 20, ma'am. Is that how you want to speak to people? Your mum's like, Oh, Moses. Can we get... So then they get uh, the, the good news. The, the couple who have the best chemistry with everyone is Paola and Jose. Because the young bucks actually are interested in Paola and Jose's shtick is working with the MILFs. Gilfs included. And then they say, but the bad news is the couple who haven't been on the show remotely until this episode where one says, I don't want to talk. And the other one says, hi, will you eat my ass? Uh, they're going to be leaving the show. Oh, well, boo, here's goodbye. Bye. Fuckity bye. Off you go. So, oh boy. What have we got here? When Steph, by the way. When Steph was doing hers. She's just like, I don't know. Go back to Steph. A little bit more. There we, when Steph's there, she's just like, ah, uh, I don't, you know, I'm kind of happy with the position. I mean, with Gabriel and Ryan. So I'm just going to like hope God leads me to wherever I want to go. Sweetheart, number one, your God ain't fucking here to save you in this place. First of all, second of all, I imagine God's a pretty busy dude. And you know what God probably doesn't have a lot of time for? Is leading you to a fucking cock. Now come with me, Steph. Here, this is Ryan. I have brought you here. Look at his penis. Isn't it wonderful? I made that. Yes, I did. I truly did, you know. It's a magnificent creation of mine, isn't it? The balls, I, I, I didn't know what to... Anyway, uh, please, please, I have given up my, my very, very precious time so you can meet a penis. Shut up, Steph. So, everyone's drinking. What a surprise. And, uh... <laughs> Steph is on the um, hammock with Gabriel, who's wearing, yes, a studded anklet to go with his eyeliner, his painted nails, his meth addict and coke addict addiction, I should really say, and the fact that he's probably into dudes while sitting on the edge going, Steph... We're just we're just girls together. And yeah, he's actually saying that we're just girls together. Oof. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Dylan comes out and he's just like, "Whoa, hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. What's that boy doing with my woman? That woman's my property, my property." So Steph says, hey, do you want to sit over here, Ryan? And then Gabriel, Gabriel says, if he, if he comes over here, I'm gone. <laughs> Love it. We're just a couple of girls hanging out. Just a couple of friends hanging out. A couple of girls, you know. <laughs> Ryan's just like, nah, 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 nah. So then Ryan uh, gets Steph secluded uh, so that he can put... Um, you know, some sort of 
ankle bracelet device that tracks her whereabouts, you know, that the patient, you know, patients, prisoners get when they come out. You know, we're going to put a, an ankle bracelet so we know where you are at all times. You've got a curfew. Ryan's locking this one down, you know, locking this one down. She might be stuck in, stuck in the trafficking, if you know what I mean. So uh, Ryan's just like, ha, 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 I'm so clever. I'm going to play, I'm going to play a trick here that's, that's not going to work. He says, right, do you want to come wake up at half past five in the morning and then watch the sun come up with me? And she's like, oh, I don't know. You know, I could do that. I've been drinking. We've all been drinking. We're all assholes. And he says, well, if you don't get up, then I get to spend the whole day with you with no Gabriel. And she like laughs and stuff. Ha 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 ha. He thinks he's going to get that. I don't think he's going to get that. I don't think he's going to get that. Gabriel's now in a nice skeleton onesie playing the drum. Ah, uh, mummy, mummy. There's a man talking to the girl I like, mummy. Probably, he's probably got a nappy on. Fucking babies, these boys. And then his mum says, look, if anyone starts mucking about with my son, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight his corner. And he's just like, mummy mm, does everything for me. Mm, Betty, a dink a dun a poo poo. Fucking chat. This guy's a coke-headed, meth-headed child. So uh, Steph's just like, yeah, okay. Ke oh, no. Kelly and Billy, who is Steph's son, they go running off to a hot tub that's cold, so they, they have to go to the hot tub that's in his mum's room, in his room, because it's warm. Uh, Kelly wants to, to suck the collagen off his lips. So she says, uh, can we go into the sauna a little bit more private in the sauna? Don't want your mum walking in. By the way, she, when she tried to get into this hot tub, she fucking fell over. I laughed a lot. So uh, they go into the sauna and uh, she, she's a wrinkled prune. A wrinkled prune. They start making out. That's the coming up. Then... Uh, I think it's Gabriel comes in and says, uh, hey, Billy's, uh, Billy's with Kelly in the room. <laughs> and she's like, oh, no. So she storms into the room. She's like, stop it. So Billy gets into bed with Kelly, the next bed to his mum, where Kelly's going, oh, come here, big boy. And he's like, oh, grab it. And they're, they're just trying to wind the mum up. But later on, Billy admits that, you know, some stuff sort of happened under the, under the blanket. And then Steph is in bed and Gabriel just jumps on the bed and is just like, right, I'm sleeping here tonight. And she's like, yep, no problem. And then she says to all of them, oh, yeah, Ryan said, because she's a little cow. She likes to play. Ryan said that uh, he's going to come wake me up at 5.30. And if I, if I uh, don't get up, then I get to, I got to spend the whole day with him and I can't see you for 24 hours. And they're just like, that's, that's weird. Yeah, it's very possessive if somebody doesn't know. Ryan goes to the door at 5.30, knocks on the door. Uh -uh. She ain't getting up. She's in bed with... She's in bed with Gabriel. Gabriel wanted a bedtime story. So, <laughs> during the night, <laughs> Kelly starts snoring like a fiend. So they kick Gabriel, Gabriel out of the bed, his mum's bed, and he gets into bed with his mum. So this is Billy and his mum in bed together. Well, Kelly in a, in, in a, in a tenor lady fucking nappy is just snoring like <laughs> ah. 
in the other bed. Now, first of all, I wouldn't be in this situation. But if I was in this situation, I wouldn't be climbing into bed with me mum. I'd be grabbing a blanket and going out onto one of the chaise longs or the balcony or just somewhere else. No, get in bed with your mum, you fucking baby. They're all babies. So then they're just like, yay, everything's great. Everything's funny. Everything's groovy. And then there's a knock at the door and a new, a new, new, new r -r 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 couple come walking in. Get ready. Next week. Oh, we're not going to see that. Next week. There's going to be a new couple, a new MILF to plow, to deposit some Tinder sauce into the donut dispensary. And another young buck that is going to make one of these kids' mamas howl. Until then, you take care. Bye for now.